Robert, this is Programmer Mitch. Let's hop right into the question. It's got a lot of likes. Um, it's an easy, and it's going to go over a, a concept um, that we'll talk about in just a moment. But you are a professional uh, robber planning to rob houses along the street. Hey, Paul Sidney, thanks for stopping in today. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security system connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. So I've seen a lot of people complaining, are data structures and algorithms actually useful? Well, this one's useful, right? Because if, if you can't land that programming job, you know, you can always move into to burglary. Just a little joke, don't rob houses, please. Uh, but given a list of, oops, I'll go ahead and erase that. But given a list of non-negative integers representing the amount of money of each house, determine the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So let's kind of think about this. Um, and I can maybe, you know, help give a little bit away by, by having an array down there. But if we have uh, two houses like this that have uh, zero money stashed and one money stashed, well, then obviously we want to rob the second house. But then it gets a little bit tricky if we have five and then three in the next, right? Because in this case, at this point, you want to rob this house if you're just kind of walking along. But with the five tips the scales because if you rob the zeroth house that has zero dollars and you rob the, the, the fifth house that has five dollars, um, that's going to be greater than the one plus the three. So how, how, how can we kind of think about that? Well, you can make that um, comparison uh, when, you, when you get to that point. When you get to this five, okay, you say, okay, this is the max of zero plus five or compared to one. And so five is greater, so that at this point we have a, a running total, and then that's that's gonna be a five. And at this point we get to a three, we have a different running total. And once you realize that there's two running totals, um, then I think this um, this problem becomes a lot easier. Uh, when we have this three. So okay, then you say, all right, well, do I want to rob the first one and the third one, which is only four, or I just compare that to the fifth one? And five, of course, is greater than four. So you said, okay, at this point, this different running total is also five. They have one running total here, that's a five, and one running total here, that's a five. So when we get to this next point, this if we have one and one, we don't, we're not comparing the one plus the three plus the one. Uh, we're comparing the five plus the one. So that might be a little confusing, but we're talking about something called dynamic programming. Uh, it's a method for solving a complex problem by breaking it down into a collection of simpler subproblems, solving each of those subproblems just once and storing their solutions. Uh, the next time the subproblem, the same subproblem occurs, uh, instead of recomputing its solution, once it looks at the previously computed solution. So we save some computation time. So the solution that we're going to do here, if we've been talking about time complexity and space complexity, this will be linear time complexity. So we just walk through the array once and it'll be constant uh, space complexity. We don't have to assign any additional memory for this. So you, you may have uh, thought, okay, well this is really, we're keeping a track of the, the best thing to keep in the evens place, right? The things that are connected. And then there's also an odds place. So let's go ahead and kind of write that out. So there's going to be an even sum, which is going to be zero. There's also going to be an odd sum that's also zero. And we just walk through the for loop, for i in the range of length nums. If that i uh, modulo 2 equals 0, so that's, this of course is a test to see that we're even or odd. Then we have an even sum that we're keeping track of, and I probably shouldn't have erased that, but let's see if I can remember what those, there's like a 0, 1, 5, 3, 1, 1. So this even sum is going to be the max of even sum plus the nums of i, where we're currently looking at, which is an even spot, or if adding the new number is not bigger than just keeping the last thing, uh, then we just do an odd sum. Otherwise, we just flip it. Um, we don't have to write another condition because if it's not even, it must be odd. And we want to say the odd sum is the max of the odd sum. Now let's write it this way. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit clearer. The even sum uh, and odd sum plus nums of i. And that's for the same reasons. Um, that's up there. At the end of the day, we want to return not the max, not just the even sum or the odd sum. We want to say, okay, which one's bigger? We want to take the max of the even sum and the odd sum. Um, so let's kind of walk through. 
I'm trying to think of the best way. So let's we can do a custom test case in leak code, and we can do that zero one five three one one. Um, and I want to try to think of oops, real quick. So we're gonna do we're going to print uh, i nums of i uh, the even sum and then the odd sum. And let's see if that, that makes after doing all these things. So let's do that for zero five uh, three one one. Perhaps we should have tested this code actually works first. And actually we're gonna do that. I'm gonna comment this out and make sure that I don't have a bug because I don't wanna explain something that doesn't doesn't work. So let's make sure that we get it accepted on the leak code online judge here. And we are accepted, good. Um, let's just go see the details just to see how, how we're doing. Uh, 68%, so it seems like there's a big block of people that are doing linear time complexity here and probably some uh, uh, slower stuff out here. So we're doing pretty good. Now let's go ahead and hop back into um, that custom test case, which leak code has helpfully deleted for me. So that's 0, 1, 5, 3, 1, 1. And now we want to be printing these things um, to understand this. Just test in production. That's too easy. Okay, so, and oftentimes when you're doing print statements, which you probably shouldn't be doing too much as you get a little bit more advanced, you kind of debug stuff, but they're, they're, they're nice. Um, uh, to do like real quick things. So we say uh, I, I, it's good to make these, if you are doing um, console logs or print statements like this, if you put little descriptors and you can later on know what the hell you're talking about, which is really nice. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, you get everything good there? Let's put the space there and everyone so it's nice and good. I appreciate that Kappa. It's an HD Kappa, that's pretty nice. Um, okay, so on the first pass through, after we um, do everything, we have I0, nums of I0, the even sum is uh, the even sum plus nums of I or the odd sum. Nums of I is zero, so that's what we end up with. Uh, when i is 1, nums of i is also 1, and the odd sum becomes 1. When i equals 2, uh, nums of i is 5, right? So now the even sum is 0 plus 5, so it's 5, and the odd sum is still 1. We, haven't, we don't do any assignment on the even sum when we're in an odd number. We don't do any assignment on the odd sum when we're on an even number. Next up, we get to this, the, where... Um, I is three and nums of I is also three, and so here's like where where the the kind of the kernel of the uh, dynamic programming is shown here, as opposed to making this one plus three, which is what uh, the previous odd sum plus uh, nums of I is. We say okay, what's the max? Well, that max is is, is uh, of even sum is included, right? We're at this point, right? Well, that says, okay, let's just take a 5 here, because it's better just to take this 0 plus 5 than this 1 plus 3. And that means once we get to this next 1, we'll be using the 5 and not the 4. And so hopefully that, that kind of makes sense. This is like a baby, baby um, dynamic programming uh, question. Um, so we'll go ahead and hop through uh, just one more quick example, or assume one more just walking through the code. Um, I want to get to a little bit more complex ones, but... This, this does show the basic approach, right? We're solving smaller problems uh, as we walk up, and uh, yeah, they make some really nice uh, solutions for us. So we have an even sum that's zero, an odd sum that's zero. We walk through the uh, array or list in Python. If we're at an odd index, we say, okay, the even sum, take the max of the even sum plus what we're currently looking at, or uh, the odd sum, whichever is greater. If we're at an odd index, we do that with the odd sum. Take the max of the even sum or the odd sum what we're currently looking at. And at the end of the day, we return that max of the uh, even sum and the odd sum. So this was leak code number 198, House Robber. I'm a programmer, Mitch. Every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. EST, I am doing a different uh, algorithmic and data, data structure problem. Right now, I'm doing leak code, but I might branch out in the future. Um, Hey, Cody Eli, thanks for stopping in. Uh, unfortunately, I'm all wrapping up this one, but I will be posting this VOD on my YouTube channel, which is called Programmer Mitch. 
and I hope to see you uh, next week. Catch you later.